So today we're going to be um, drawing a bit of a perspective drawing of uh, Masjid Al-Aqsa. Um, if you want, you can follow along with me. I'm just making different lines on the paper. Um, you don't have to. I'm using a 2B pencil because um, it's a bit darker than, than HB, uh, but you don't have to. Um, you know, the best thing for you to do would be to go a little bit light um, initially when you make your marks on the paper. And then once you've made your marks, you know, your marks on the paper, you can darken them or um, erase. I, I try not to erase um, simply because then it, it sort of ruins the surface of the paper. So if I can, I will try not to. Um, and so what you're going to do is you're just going to continue to make these lines um, <clears throat> some of them I'm doing lighter and some of them I'm doing a bit darker uh, and you'll see how it goes uh, this is the dome of the rock here that's going to be in the middle um, and then I'm going to keep continuing adding details inshallah as I go so like I said you can follow along with me if you would like to um, or you can uh, use an image that you have to be able to create your own. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you can also print um, an image as well, a line drawing. If you find one that you feel you prefer, then uh, go ahead and, and find that and print that out. You can trace as well. Um, this is very flexible. So I'm continuing to um, make my lines and draw the Dome of the Rock initially, and that's going to be in the center. And then I'm going to spread out as I go along um, to try and put in the um, other details that surround the Dome of the Rocks, uh, the Dome of the Rock. Um, and the whole compound is known as the Al-Aqsa compound. So um, although this isn't the Al-Aqsa Mosque itself, the central piece is going to be the Dome of the Rock. The Dome of the Rock is situated on the Al-Aqsa compound. So now I'm just putting in some windows and um, they don't have to be very accurate, but you'll notice they're larger at um, in toward, going towards the center and then they are a bit um, smaller as I go out back and that also helps create the perspective that something is um, bigger when it's close to us and uh, smaller when it's far away. Now I was drawing this using um, somebody else's drawing that I came across so um, you know, I can't speak to the accuracy of what I'm doing, but um, and and even um, in a sketch. So sometimes when I have sketched in in real life, um, looking at things, I sometimes you know use a bit of artistic license. So again, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. So the Dome of the Rock is, is sort of the central piece in, in this particular um, drawing that we are doing um, and painting. But um, what, we, what we're looking at is really an entire 35-acre compound. Um, and it's the third most important site. And we know from uh, the Holy Qur'an uh, where um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions um, in Surah Al-Isra, um, how the Prophet وسلم, was taken to Al-Aqsa and to the heavens um, on a night journey. So, um, but it is a significant spot for all the different faith groups. And that's why there's a lot of fighting over it. Um, in 1947, the United Nations drew up a partition plan to separate um, what was Palestine 
and it was under British control. And then um, it was split into two states. So one for Jews, mainly those that had migrated, um, you know, following uh, terrible things that happened in World War Two to Jews. And so there was an influx of Jewish people that came to that region to, um, they craved safety. And one was for the Palestinians. And um, so the British divided it that way. At that time, it belonged to the international community under the administration of the United Nations. And it was designated as, um, you know, a historic site and, um, you know, by and, and recognized as a World Heritage Site by the United Nations Cultural Agency called UNESCO. And it's important to all three faiths, uh, Christians, Jews and Muslims, of course.
So as you can see, I'm just continuing to add different pieces and try to create sort of a horizon line um, where the dome of the rock is at the center and then uh, other parts of the compound surround um, it in, in a line. But I've also tried to create um, a bit of a perspective so that some things are wider and some things are smaller as they go further back into the piece. I'm continuing to add some details to the left side here and you can do the same um, if you're if you're following along uh, just keep adding different details and different lines and um, eventually you'll get this sort of you know um, image of what it is and what it looks like Just adding more details as I go along and um, trying to make sure that everything lines up uh, in terms of just that horizon line as well. If you ever visit the Al-Aqsa uh, compound, you'll notice that there's lots of tiny little buildings and um, the, the place is beautiful. Um, it's very high up, so you, you can imagine uh, ascending to the heavens from there. So I've got myself a few supplies now to be able to add some paint and colour. I've got various colours, um, that one is vivid yellow, the one before that was cashmere tan, uh, this one is cinnamon brown, and this one is espresso, and this is burnt umber. And they're all from the um, dollar store. And then I've got a palette, which is from the dollar store as well. And I've just added just a tiny bit of paint. I probably won't use, you know, all of that. I've got myself a bigger palette because I want to be able to sometimes maybe mix colors. So I might use that. And I've got a yogurt pot filled with water. Um, you'll need quite a bit of water on on this particular painting. I don't usually use a lot of water. And then you've got um, a brush. I've got I'm using this brush again. This was from the dollar shop. Um, I've got a foam brush and I've got a thinner brush that I'll use to add details at the end. So the first thing we're going to do is add plenty of water and I'm going to grab my palette. Um, and I'm, I'm just, you know, wetting my palette almost. Um, I'll add a bit of yellow to start off with. Yellow can be quite overpowering, so you want to be careful how much you add. Um, and then I'm going to add some of my cashmere tan into that and uh, mix them together. And 
um, you know, I'll need more water than that. So adding a bit more yellow just to make it um, a tad more yellow. It doesn't matter if my water gets dirty because this is my color scheme. So I'm just going to continue to add water. Mix it up nicely each time because it's sort of watering down. Um, what you can do if you want to check to see, you know, what the color is like, you can drop test a little bit on your on your paper. Um, and that helps you know, you know what, no, that's probably a bit thick. So I'm going to add a bit more water to that, actually, because I'm not very satisfied. And then you can start. Um, you start adding your uh, color um, to the to the paper. You don't have to be very, very neat and tidy. This is just our background color. And you'll be able to see the pencil underneath it because it is very thin. We added quite a lot of water. So you'll be able to do that. This might darken up after a while. We can add some more layers if we choose to. But for now, we're just adding a very thin, thin amount and um, just going over our initial drawing. And I kind of ran out of paint, so I am uh, just sort of trying to um, blend that. I realize that I've got two pieces of paper there, so I'll put that one to one side. Um, and like I said, because I had too little on my in my palette, I'm going to have to mix a tiny bit more, but not too much. And uh, just finish finish off that bit there. Um, I'm not going to go to the absolutely to the top of the paper or to the bottom of the paper. Uh, that's why I could use that uh, bottom strip as a bit of a testing spot. Um, but you know, plenty of of water here, and plenty of um, patience as you get all of this onto your onto your page. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my cashmere tan now, just cashmere tan, because my first layer I had added, uh, you know, uh, yellow to it. So I'm going to, you know, ignore my yellow now. And I'm going to add a bit of cashmere tan with some water. And um, just mixing that in my palette so that... I get uh, quite a fair bit there now. Uh, still not a lot, but a bit. And again, I'm going to add quite a bit of water because I don't want to add neat paint to this. It's going to be layered. So I learned my lesson from last time and added a bit more water. I'm still going to add a little bit of yellow because I feel like I want to go gradually with my layers. And I think I'm going to use my thin brush to add my details um, to some of the details to the buildings, but I'm going to use this as my background base for my buildings. So you'll see that I'm, I've am i just started, um, you know, going where my drawings are just to add some more depth. Uh, and I can see my drawing underneath, so it's not a problem. I'm just adding a little bit of a darker color there for those items because I want them to be seen. And I'm not being very neat and tidy. I don't think it really matters. Um, you know, my central piece, the Dome of the Rock there, I am kind of making an effort to 
to go a little bit neatly. I'm not uh, completely, completely outside the lines. But if some bits are darker and some bits are lighter, that's okay as well. Uh, it, it's not going to matter because we're going to keep adding layers and continue to just add layers. And because my foreground looks very blank, I am going to add tiles eventually um, with some paint, maybe with some marker. But I'm just kind of adding in some details there, um, showing some of the perspective um, so that, you know, some of those tiles will look a little bit uh, darker and some will be a bit lighter. And I'm not doing it very, very... Um, you know, I'm not being very, very precise um, either, but I just wanted to uh, get rid of some of that really um, light background colour that I had done because I'm reminding myself that there are going to be details there soon. Now what I'm doing is taking, um, you know, my next brown colour and uh, just adding it slightly to my um, my background colour for my for my buildings. So, like I said, we're just going to keep adding layers. So I I don't want to add too much because I don't want it to. Um, be too too dark to start off with so I'm just going to go into those places that are a bit darker and highlight them slightly and that dome there you know some parts are a bit darker on the sides and that gives it a bit more of a 3d effect and you'll see that I can still see my pencil marks. They're a little bit faded, but it's not a problem. I can still see them. So I am just continuing to um, add those in. And now I'm sort of using, you know, going to start to use a bit more and go a bit darker and see how that goes. And now what I'm going to do is add my final details and I'm going to use neat brown paint now um, because, you know, I really want some of those details to be 
uh, pronounced and very clear. Um, so I'm using neat paint. I'm no longer just uh, uh, going with my initial background color. And so I'll just continue to add some of those details.
Now, at the end, if you want to, um, you can use a marker. Um, keep in mind, actually, you can use a marker early on. Um, I, I just chose to paint as much as, as I wanted to and then um, added the, uh, tried to add some marker at the end. Um, it's not it's not really working very well because my painting hasn't dried. So my advice would be to really just wait until the paint is completely dried and then uh, go from there. But uh, you can see I'm just adding in some of these important details and some of the bolder lines just to create that effect there. And as I mentioned at the um, start, I'm, you know, I'm going to add in some of those tile lines as well. And basically, once I've done that, although my marker doesn't doesn't work very well because it is um, it's still wet. Uh, but once that's done, um, I'm going to leave it like that because I, I like it. It's um, it's created a nice effect and it's so easy to do. If you don't have browns and yellows, you can use blues and greens. You can use any color to do this. It's just about complementary colors that just create that um, really interesting effect. And um, yeah, I, it's, um, it's quite fun to do and quite easy, really. Um, so see how you get on.